I'm getting real tired of seeing Pennsylvania-based hockey teams beat the Jets, so it's time for Winnipeg to come up with a game plan for a victory against the Pittsburgh Penguins on home ice. We'll dive into how the Jets can do that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode, we're going to talk about the Jets now going up against uh, another Pennsylvania-based hockey team for a second time within the week. And uh, let's just say the last time the Jets faced this team, the Pittsburgh Penguins, things did not go according to plan. The Jets got shut out 3-0. They uh, had a, uh, a Brendan Dillon suspension, who, uh, of course, Dillon will be uh, serving the second game of his three-game suspension. Lord, we really need that to end soon because um, Logan Stanley drawing into the, to, into the lineup has not exactly gone all that well. If the Flyers game is anything to go by, uh, look, I, I know that uh, I was frustrated with Dylan's penalty the other game, but um, certainly it would be great to have him back uh, this coming week. So can't wait for him to return to the lineup. In the meantime, I kind of wonder if this is where we'll start to see uh, Vili Heinola perhaps caught up at some point today. Obviously, I'm recording this a little bit earlier than usual, so uh, I, I won't have any reactions, unfortunately, to any roster moves that happened during the day. Um, but we'll probably talk about it this coming Monday and hopefully have some good news to report from the Penguins game. And obviously, the Jets are going to be on home ice. This is a chance for the Jets to kind of Maybe uh, wipe the slate clean. Now, what I will say is that I think the line changes that we saw in the previous game uh, could potentially have a big impact in this one, right? Winnipeg switched things up right before the end of the game against the Flyers, and you saw Ehlers move back onto the first line, which is where he should have always been. You know, I've talked about it time and time again. I know that uh, some folks have disagreed over the years, but Honestly, the truth is they're just wrong. Ehlers is a first liner. He needs to be on the top line. Without it, I, I think you see this team's offense, especially from the top six, really struggle to create. Uh, it's a bit of a weird thing, right? Because the Jets very clearly have serious talent in both lines. But until you get that chemistry down right, it's almost non-functional. Uh, and that sounds weird to say, again, about a, a lineup that has Shifley, Bilardi, Ehlers, Perfetti, uh, Monaghan now and and Connor, but the reality is, unless you have the right combinations and the right players uh, feeding off of each other, it doesn't really mean that much. Um, and that's why seeing Connor Shifley and Ehlers immediately hit pay dirt and actually play pretty good hockey in the final couple of minutes, that sort of felt like a validation, right? This is what it should have been. I don't know why Bones took the whole game to reunite this trio, but at least he did it in this game and not later. So. Look, I, I mean, I, I could complain about this not being um, Ehlers, Shifley, and Velarde, but at this point, I'll just take Ehlers back on the first line in any form. I don't even care now. Uh, as long as we get that, I will uh, suspend my complaining and moaning for at least another game. But I think this could have a really big impact. You know, the last game against the, the Penguins, the Jets weren't as bad as the scoreline suggested, but I think they lacked finish. And this trio will hopefully be the Kickstarter and spark that gets the Jets back. Because I feel like Winnipeg, the last couple of months, um, you know, obviously including the break, so the, the time dilation is a little bit weird. But the, the long and short of it is, since I would say the end of December into early January and stuff, you saw the Jets scuffling a little bit. Um, especially more towards like the January portion. The end of December, the Jets were doing okay. Things were looking pretty good. They were outplaying a lot of their opponents. And then January hit, and it was kind of like, ooh, uh, some some rough patches. And it kind of coincided with Shifley going down, and then things sort of uh, hit a bit of a wall. So now the Jets have a chance to kind of come back, reset, 
They've got a mostly healthy lineup. This is a good opportunity for Winnipeg to get back in front of the home fans. Uh, it'd be nice if there's a lively crowd. I know the Jets fans might be a little angsty after seeing the last January collapse, but I don't know that this is necessarily something that's going to happen again. At least I hope not. Uh, I know the circumstances and everything seem very familiar. Let's just be optimistic about it and say it's not going to be the same thing twice. I'm hoping and praying it's not because the last January collapse was pretty ugly to watch. And uh, let's be real. No one wants to go through that again. As far as the Penguins are concerned, uh, obviously, I think the lineups are, are going to mostly be the same, but I think Achari will probably become uh, be coming out. He did suffer a concussion from the Dylan hit. Really unfortunate. Uh, again, no intention in that, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It kind of happened. Um, Dylan, you know, stepped up and unfortunately caught him high. And you could tell that right after the hit, Achari wasn't 100%. So tough one. Um, but uh, the the Penguins are mostly going to have a, a pretty strong top nine back. Uh, we're going to see Riley Smith, Jake Gensel, and Raquel on the winger side. Crosby, Malkin, and Eller down the middle, and Rust, O'Connor, and Puya Yarvi on the right side. And then, of course, in the fourth line, Harkins, uh, some sort of a center, I don't know who, maybe Zahorna, um, and then Jeff Carter. So uh, the Jets, I think, for you know their part, they match up relatively well against the Penguins. I think that first game um, a couple of nights ago, I wouldn't say it was fluky necessarily, but I feel like the Jets will have enough if they make these line changes uh, that I'm about to propose, or at least something along these lines that gets the, the team going again. I think the Jets could probably come away with a win here. Uh, I can't imagine the Jets losing like a like a, a sixth game or so. I feel like that's a little bit much, but maybe the Jets have something in store for us that none of us want to see. But I'm going to choose to be optimistic this time. I think Winnipeg's going to rebound after a rough last month and a half or so. Let's say a 3-1 win for the Jets, maybe even a 4-1. We're due for a whooping of one of these teams, and it's about time. I think the Jets really could use it. I think the fans could use it, and honestly, I could too. <laughs> I, I don't like talking about losses. I obviously um, would prefer to see this team do really well, and you know, when, when the mood is heavy and folks aren't having fun, it's just not a great watch. So let's let's you know be a little optimistic and hope for a Jets victory, but... I think Winnipeg really should perhaps make some line changes. We'll talk about what I could potentially envision and what I would think would be fun to see in just a little bit. Before we go ahead of the, ourselves, though, and get to that point, let's talk about something else. Uh, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy and perhaps a Winnipeg Jets win against the Penguins is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one vehicle, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the victory. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are checking in on uh, some pretty cool stuff for Winnipeg, obviously. You know, the Jets made some late changes in the last game, and thankfully it looked like Winnipeg might finally be getting some, some mojo back offensively after some really lackluster recent games. Not going to read too, too much into it because it was junk time, I guess, if we're being honest, but you know what? We need at least a little bit of optimism, and I think the Jets could do some fun stuff if they make a couple of key lineup changes. We'll talk about what ones I think would make sense in just a moment here, but uh, before we get to that, just wanted to let you know something really cool the Locked On Network is doing. We have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and also on Amazon Fire TV. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts and international shows covering every league. Find the Locked On Sports Today channel now on Amazon Fire TV. Now, like I said, uh, the Jets, look, Winnipeg has kind of scuffled recently, right? I think that's a very generous way of putting it. 
Uh, the the 5v5 offense and finishing has really nosedived, and part of that due to, um, you know, a bit of a regression, right? We all know that the Jets can't score 100% of the shots forever, right? The Winnipeg's finishing over the past first half of the season was really good, perhaps a little too good. If we're being honest, given the amount of chances they were creating, where they were shooting from, all that stuff, it wasn't perhaps... Uh, quote, end quote, sustainable. Uh, now, I know the, the Canucks are kind of bucking that trend and redefining what sustainable even looks like, but even they are bound to eventually hit a wall with some of their shooting. And we saw uh, actually just yesterday they lost 4 nothing to the Bruins and actually gave up a couple of shorthanded goals. So uh, eventually, you know, things will probably come back to earth, but I imagine for the time being they're still going to have fun and enjoy themselves. Now, for the Jets, I think Winnipeg could make one or two changes to the lineup that would have a pretty big impact overall. I think on the first line, let's go with Connor, Shifley, and Ehlers. I know this is a trio that I mentioned earlier, having stayed together in the last game for a few minutes. Uh, I, I know that Connor is never going to get off the first line. I feel like that's almost a given. I would be shocked if it ever happens again. Um, so I'm just going to pretend it's not going to because I, I can't imagine Bones demoting him. My basic problem with KFC is that when he's not scoring goals, I feel like he's kind of a passenger on this line, which is weird to say because he clearly has like crazy loads of skill. But whether he deploys it in the most effective way to help his line mates, that's been a bit of a question mark, right? I think it's been a question mark for his entire career because he's very much the kind of guy who's like the elite finisher and the poacher, but perhaps not somebody who uh, is is more of the setup player. I think we saw some instances where, honestly, he tried to do that in, in the last game against the Flyers, and I would have preferred that he just took the shot instead because when he did try to set, set up his line mates, it ended up getting turned over and countered. So just go for it. I mean, like, he's got the elite release. He's got a great sense of goal-scoring instinct, and I think sometimes – Maybe he's tried to overcomplicate his game and add more to it. Just go back to the basics. If you're going to have somebody on that line be your distributor, let it be Mark or, or in this case, Nick, right? Both of those guys are super skilled at passing the puck. Ehlers, in particular, makes a great perimeter skater, uh, in part because he'll, he'll drop below the goal line. He'll find his line mates. And Mark and Connor both have the ability to get into really smart positions and capitalize. And they also have good hand-eye coordination down low. So... This trio, I think if you put them back together, they're going to cook. Keep it together. I think that's a good trio to uh, start winning some matchups. I think the only thing is that without Velarde, you'll probably see um, a few defensive lapses from Kyle and Mark. I mean, that's just something that you're just going to have to accept because, like, Ehlers is not doing much of the defensive work. He'll track back, but he's not really the kind of guy who's suited for that. And Shifley and Connor aren't either, but... You know what? It is what it is. You're just going to have to accept at least a little bit of a downgrade in some capacity if you're trading it for awesome offense, which I think that line is going to cook again. Second line, let's have Perfetti, Monahan, and Velarde play together. Uh, I think that could be really useful. Um, I think if you're looking for a bit of a jump, uh, this could be a pretty good way to do it. Uh, Velarde has kind of struggled to fit alongside Shifley and Connor in part because I just don't think his game complements theirs as well when he's being asked to be one of the guys who's leading transition. He can do it, but I think Ehlers has that extra level of speed and skating that gets him into open space more often. And so Velarde, if he's with Monaghan and Perfetti, doesn't have to blaze a trail. This trail can be your, your slower, more uh, passing and skill-based unit, and this could be a really fun trio. We saw them clean up nicely after the first line. They created some dangerous chances and a good couple of rebounds. Maybe they can do the same against uh, Pittsburgh, and honestly, it'd be really nice to get Perfetti going again because like Cole's recent lack of scoring, I'm sure, is pissing him off. Um, we know that Perfetti's got a great shot. Sometimes I think he actually doesn't use it enough. Uh, I, I think he tries to, again, maybe over overcook passes or something, trying to look for the perfect one that you know his teammates can pound home. But honestly, in his shoes, sometimes he should just take the shot. Um, I know it sounds very simple and very silly, but... You know, I, I think he occasionally wants to set up that perfect chance. And sometimes, you know, you just got to go for it. Uh, you know, all, too often this team has maybe overplayed their hand and waited too long and the opportunity has gone before you know it. So, um, yeah, I, I think it would make sense to perhaps do a flip there. Now, in the bottom six, um, there's only one particular change I'm interested in making. 
I might consider flipping Appleton and Barron. Uh, you know, Appleton for me has just been okay, and I don't know if he'll actually do all that well with Nemesnikov, but I feel like Niederreiter needs a little more skill to play with, and Appleton recently has kind of been killing offensive drives. I don't know what's happened to his game over the past couple of years, but that version of him where he was really the kind of crash the crease, tap in merchant kind of player, he's not doing that a lot. Uh, and I feel like he did it once in, in the Flyers game, maybe once or twice, but otherwise when he's playing a little bit higher up the, uh, the zone or along the walls, he's really not as effective. Baron, though, I feel like is a really big forechecking force, and I think Morgan has a little more jump to his game. I think he has a little bit more offense uh, to provide and perhaps could chip in a bit more than Appleton is right now. Now, like a, a line of Appleton, Nemesnikov, and Ayafalo is an elite fourth line. I think that's a great trio. You might actually be able to give them a few extra minutes over um, the typical fourth line, although you don't want to give them like a ton, but I think it could be really effective. And Nemesnikov has generally been you know, a really effective center for the Jets. So uh, if he can help Appleton and Ayafalo start to click a little bit more, I think that could be good. I think Barron honestly has deserved a bigger look just in general. I feel like I've come away routinely impressed with his effort, and I feel like he's generally done well in his minutes. So maybe give him a more expanded offensive role. It's not going to happen. I don't think Bones has any intention of making that swap. If anything, I could imagine him just doing Appleton and Ayafalo instead. But I feel like every time you promote Ayafalo, you just kind of see something lacking in his game. The version of him that was with the Kings hasn't really transferred over to the Jets. Maybe it'll change over the next few weeks. I don't know, but I keep feeling like he just hasn't really found his stride. He doesn't win those second chance pucks. He sometimes kills offensive drives as well. I, I keep waiting for Alex to really explode, and so far it hasn't happened. But maybe there's a version of him that we're going to see here pretty soon, and that'd be great if he can find it before the playoffs because it's clear he's a super talented player. We know that he's done really well. And, uh, you know, the, the version of him that's with the Jets, I don't think is the true version of uh, what I follow can bring. So let's hope that he can find his form and uh, get that confidence back because it's clear he's a good player. He just has to show it. So, well, I mean, those are the internal things that the Jets could do. Obviously, externally, Winnipeg is probably preparing for a busy trade deadline. We'll talk about expectations for what the Jets could be doing at this point and whether we should really you know, expect them to make a big swing or if they're going to take another depth approach here like they've done in, in previous years. But before we get into all of that, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't a search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors. Ditch the busy work. You can use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed just doesn't uh, help you hire faster. It also matches you to genuinely quality matches, some of the highest matches in all of job site searching. Obviously, I've actually used Indeed myself as somebody looking for work, and I can attest to the fact that it's detailed. It's very straightforward for users. They make it easy to apply to tons of jobs, um, and they make sure that when you kind of build your candidate profile, that they actually suggest stuff to you that's relevant. So I can only imagine for employers looking for folks, this is an easy way to get in on all of the hiring action, but without the time wasting of candidates who don't really fit what you need. You should join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Customers of this show will actually get a $75 sponsored job credit to get jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this Locked on Winnipeg Jets podcast. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions to apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Now, on the other side of things, for those of you who are perhaps at the other end of the spectrum, you might be thinking more about retirement. And did you know that if you even have a 401 for, uh, 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. 
So Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as a Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of three uh, of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member of SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's closing thoughts as we are uh, just wrapping up with some trade deadline thoughts. I've, I've kind of waffled back and forth over the past few weeks, figuring out what Winnipeg needs, what they want, and how they could address it. And, uh, you know, I keep thinking that Winnipeg might not be making as big of a splash at the trade deadline. Maybe if they're looking for, like, value pieces, they go for, like, Chris Tanev. Uh, Tanev would actually be a pretty nice right-sided upgrade, although I don't know how you make the, the roster situation fit without swapping uh, one of the bigger Jets defenders. I feel like Nate Schmidt might get moved. I don't know. Um, Schmidt is obviously very beloved, but he's got a huge contract. He's got another year. And so I feel like if he gets moved, I wonder if the Jets would have to ask Salar or, uh, or or like pay up a little bit more than they would just for Tanev alone. Because it was like Tanev uh, for a second and some other asset. And Schmidt's not really an asset. He's more of a, a cap hit liability. So I could see maybe like a sweetener or something being tossed in. I don't know. Just a guess. Just kind of spitballing. But I feel like um, Tanev could be a potential move. Sean Walker is likely out of the question now since the uh, the the Flyers are asking for like a first plus is is what it sounds like. Uh, I know a first round pick has been discussed primarily, but you can probably guess that there's something else involved, like another prospect. Not a high one, I can imagine, maybe like a mid tier B prospect. But you know the Jets probably don't want to give up a lot. Uh, already they've already lost their first round pick this year for Monahan and. Funny enough, that does have uh, apparently has had some sort of an impact on the trade market because we're seeing every team now asking for a first for a center. Scott Lawton apparently has a very expensive price, uh, and the Flyers are not overly keen to sell him, which I think is just their front office being a little bit cagey about it. Uh, we've seen Nick Dowd apparently going for a first by the cap standards. Obviously, these guys in normal years wouldn't go for that, but apparently now there's a run on centers. So, hey. Maybe the Jets did themselves a favor and priced other contenders out looking for a, uh, a middle six center. So <laughs> I don't know if that's good. <laughs> I don't know if that really makes the Jets trade of, for, for Monaghan all that much better, but at least it's something to be amused by. In terms of like wingers, though, I feel like the Jets might go for like a middle six winger rather than a top six guy. Bushnevich would be a dream, right? Pavel would be amazing. He'd be a huge upgrade for this team and he'd transform their entire top nine. But I feel like the Jets... A probably would struggle to convince him to waive his uh his clause. And I, you know, B, I, I just don't know if the Jets are really prepared to go all in in that way. The way that they've approached the last couple of deadlines is to go for like middle six pieces who are decent. Um, you know, thinking Nino and a rider for like a second, which was really cheap, and Nemestikov for a lower pick, which was fantastic. Both great additions to the team, both kind of moving the needle in terms of uh making your bottom six elite, but perhaps not. Uh, helping the top and finishing. And that's where I think the Jets really need an injection. But I just don't know that they're really going to go for that. Winnipeg might try to do this more um, offense by committee sort of approach. And I, I guess they're expecting McGrory at some point to sign and perhaps even be that internal boost rather than trying to trade for a big asset. Which, look, if that's the case, that's fair. But I feel like on top of Monaghan, you need at least one other big trade asset. And I don't know that settling for a mid-tier player is going to be the kind of, of, of needle mover that the Jets should really go for. I think Winnipeg should try to avoid just going for a ceiling or like floor raising stuff. Go for a ceiling raiser, right? A player who can really transform this team and make them better. We saw Travis Konechny absolutely shred the Jets in the Flyers game. Maybe Winnipeg could go after him and somehow get the Flyers to give him up. That's probably never happening, but it's nice to dream. But I'd be curious to know who your trade targets are, who are you really interested in, and who would you love to see for the Jets? 
I've already talked about plenty of wingers and, and defenders and stuff. I think we're past the point of looking for centers now, but in terms of defenders and uh, wingers, I think the Jets definitely have options. Blue liners, less so because the market's a little bit thin for decent D that I'd be interested in, but in terms of wingers, tons of them. If the Jets can somehow figure out a way to get Sprong out of Detroit, that would solve pretty much every question I have, and I'd be thrilled with that as Winnipeg's primary last move. But I don't know. The price may be too high. I, I'm not... Uh, inside Winnipeg's front office right now. I don't know what they're willing to pay, but if the Jets are offering up some good assets, you know, swing swing in the right way, swing smartly, and I think you can come away with a big middle to top six upgrade in the right way. So keep an eye out for that, and if the Jets make any trades, of course, we'll have analysis on that in future episodes. But for tonight's show, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. I encourage you to come back here next week for some recap action against the Penguins and more Winnipeg Jets coverage, so don't go anywhere. But as always, have a great night, and go Jets go.